Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm back with another video for the day, and I'm going to talk about the Second Amendment, gun rights, our right to bear arms, overthrow tyr tyrannical governments, and many more factors, and why it's so important, just like the First Amendment, and how both of those are hand in hand. Without the other, they can't exist. Beforehand, though, um, in my description and pinned in the comments um, on YouTube will be my links to Rumble and to my minds. Definitely go check them out and sub. I appreciate it. It's awesome if you do, but let's go ahead and get into this. So people worry about guns and some people don't, right? There's a ton of pros and a ton of cons to guns. Ultimately though, everything kind of has that. When it comes to guns though, not only is it good to have them for protection, you can use them for countless other things. I mean, you could technically say robbing a store is technically another thing, but uh, <laughs> that's not what I'm getting at. All right, we're going to have bad apples and every bit of society it, you can't restrict good law-abiding citizens because of a couple of bad apples it's the same with driving someone drinks and goes and gets in a horrible crash and kills people we're not barring everyone from getting a car and driving because we need it now having these guns for example i'm in oklahoma a lot of people in bigger states and other areas especially blue ones don't understand that on farmland you need a gun to protect your farm and so on. If you have like a huge chicken coop and then you have just a bunch of plants and everything growing, veggies, etc., you're going to have coyotes and you're going to have wolves and stuff, depending on where you are, coming up to your chickens and trying to get your chickens. And you're going to have to defend your chickens because they're your resources. They're your food. They're your eggs. They're what takes care of your family, allows you to be sustainable. And then you have wild hogs, which are very devastating to farmers, crops, and everything. And they're hard to take down. You're not going to you're not gonna take one of them down without a gun, all right? You're not about to run up and charge some wild boar with a dagger and hope you're going to get it on with it because you're, you're going to win a stupid prize. And that prize is probably hospital or death or both. So it's, it's not pretty. But there's so much more to the Second Amendment than just that. It's to be able to protect your home. Like, not everybody that gets a gun is trying to kill people. I got a Savage MSR-15 that shoots two, two, three, five, five, six. I've got multiple different mags for it, everything. And the last thing I want to do is to ever have to shoot somebody. Even someone that breaks into my house, I don't want to have to do it. Like, it's not something I want to do. And I know majority of people probably agree with that. But if someone breaks into my home with a gun or a weapon, and, you know, I have a little daughter and I have a wife, I got to protect my family because I don't know what this person will do, but we all are aware of what humans are capable of. It even goes beyond that, too. Protection from a tyrannical government. The Second Amendment allows us to form militias to protect our communities when public officials and so on fail to do so, and it allows us to overthrow a tyrannical government that no longer acts for the people. That's why it's called a legal insurrection. We are legally by the Second Amendment in our Constitution, allowed to overthrow our government. Now, overthrowing a government doesn't necessarily always mean it's going to be a good thing, because you could have a hyper-polarized group that's against the current government, like right now, right? The current government's not great. But we get hyper-polarized, right-leaning individuals that are very, very, very radical, and of course, there's not as many of them as radical left. Let's remember that. There's more moderates on the right than anything else. These people will go and overthrow the government. And now you've got an extremely polarized, oppressive, right-leaning government that's going to oppress the other side in the middle ground. If we don't overthrow it, then we're going to end up voting in probably some of that's polarized unless people realize, hey, we need to like chill because this cycle of oppression goes nowhere. Have you looked at the Middle East? Do you see their freaking cycle of progression? Their regression? They're, they're, they're regressing. It's like... It, it's like going out to your farm and picking all the plants and instead of eating it or selling it to people, you just throw it in the damn toilet and flush it. You're not doing anything good. Now, it, it even goes further with guns. Home defense, right? I've already mentioned. Protecting your farm from wild animals that could destroy your farm and self-sustainability, etc., um, criminals, the, uh, the right to conceal carry in public is a really big one. Do you think a uh, freaking Chirac, aka Chicago would have so much gang violence and gun crime and gun death if citizens could actually get themselves some guns and 
conceal carry them in public? You think gang members are going to want to fuck around and find out when they realize, like, a majority of their population now has guns and could see you getting ready to do something dumb and then pop you to stop you from doing it? It's an armed society is a polite society. The way I put it is no one is willing to fuck around and find out when they already know that they will indeed find out if they fuck around. Like, if that's why you predominantly see really bad gun crime only in very strict blue areas that have the strictest gun laws. You, you see it with drugs, too. The strictest drug laws, you tend to have the most drug usage and freaking drug-related crimes. That shit doesn't work. Uh, so, nonetheless, Second Amendment, it says right in it, shall not be infringed. Shall not be infringed. Ever. They are bad apples. I understand that. I understand the perspective of someone that could see a mass shooting and people die and be scared of guns for the rest of their life. I understand that. But we also got to acknowledge that if someone goes out and does a mass shooting and harms 500 plus people like the one in Australia that got their guns taken away, that's nothing compared to what the government's going to do to you and how many are going to die. So remember that. Now that's all. Thanks for listening. Y'all have a good one. Peace.